Today we're going to be talking about the sort of touchy subject of traveling around the United States on the road while carrying firearms with you on Sunday Gun Day. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today is going to be the last Sunday Gun Day from my travels around the country this summer. If for some reason you don't know, I have been on the road for about a month and a half now, coming up on two months actually, and I've been traveling around the country in my van to visit friends and other YouTubers, to film with people, to see stuff and things, and to do stuff and things as well. Now today's topic is something that I've sort of avoided for a while because I don't don't believe that anyone should be taking legal advice from the internet. Granted, there are some very qualified people out there making videos on laws in different states and certain areas and things like that, but a lot of what we are going to talk about is very situational. The only reason I'm even covering it is because I've been asked these questions pretty much constantly since I have been on the road. People want to know if I have guns with me. I do. And then they're asking about how it works with all the different laws and traveling through states where gun laws aren't as free as they are in other states. There are so many different factors that go into traveling around with firearms and it's kind of crazy to think about. It should be pretty clear with all of the videos that I make, but I believe that if I have the right to carry and bear arms, it shouldn't matter what state I'm in. If I have the license to carry firearms in my home state, which I do have, then that should be good across the entire country. As you all know, that is not the case, and because of that, we are kind of getting into this weird topic discussion of how it works when I'm actually traveling around through different states pretty much every other day while having firearms with me. Now, for a majority of you out there, I don't need to say this, but because the internet is, well, the internet, I do have to preface this video by saying, I'm not a lawyer, I am not law enforcement, I do not have any credentials to be giving law advice to people. I'm basically going to be tackling these subjects based off of my personal opinion, my own research, and what I think is the right thing to do. So if you want to get real legal advice, I suggest you do it in person with an attorney, a lawyer, or even some law enforcement officers in whichever areas you are planning on being in. So with all that being said, let's get into what it is like traveling around the country, the United States of America, while having firearms with you. So the first thing that I decided before going on this trip was one, obviously, what am I going to bring with me? Obviously, I want to have my EDC gun with me, happens to be a Gen 5 Glock 19 at the time. I do have a spare mag and ammo and all sorts of things like that. And then I do also have some other firearms in here, which I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to cover in this video, but that was really the first step. Obviously, I'm always going to have my carry gun with me, so that was like the major deciding factor of, okay, now I'm going to be traveling out of my home state with a firearm and I could run into some laws where that is frowned upon. Going along with the decision to even leave your state with firearms was the big main first step which is planning ahead. Now a lot of my trip up until this point has kind of been spitballing. I just kind of got on the road and I had a few different destinations to hit across the country. I knew there were a few different places where I was going to spend a little bit more time than others. There were some people I wanted to film with, some shows and conventions that I was going to. So one of the main things that I did was I checked the reciprocity laws between my my state, Pennsylvania, and all of the other states that I was going to either be in or travel through. I knew for a fact that I was not going to be going into any very bad gun law states like somewhere up in the Northeast, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and I definitely wasn't going to be going to California on this trip. If I ever do go to those places in the future, then I'm really going to have to kind of rethink what I'm doing and what I'm bringing with me. So I started with a rough kind of map drawn out of where I was going to be when I was going to be there and luckily for me almost every single place that I was going or I was going to be spending time in had gun laws and reciprocity with my license to carry a firearm. So with that being said I was good legal to carry this thing like I normally would it was like I never even left my home in Pennsylvania. Now of course a trip like this wouldn't be complete if there wasn't that one state that had bad gun laws and you had to travel through it or you had to stay there one night and for me that state was of course Maryland. If anyone out there is familiar with the gun laws in Maryland, 
they're not the greatest. It's not the most free state ever. Luckily for me, I was only passing through the state and where I was going through, it really only takes like 15 or 20 minutes from a part in Pennsylvania down through Maryland into West Virginia. Now that leads us into the number two point to think about, and that is knowing the laws and the reciprocity of the states that you are going to be in. I know that Maryland does not have reciprocity. I know they have some magazine restrictions and there are a lot of things in regards to their laws that are different from what I'm accustomed to being in Pennsylvania. So because of those dumb laws in Maryland, I had to sort of switch up the situation here with this firearm that I was carrying on me and anything else that I have in the van. And that sort of leads us into the next point of discussion and that is security. Now we're sort of getting into a gray area where a lot of people will tell you different things. This is really where I recommend talking to someone in law enforcement or a lawyer or an attorney. But for the most part, if you happen to be driving through a state like Maryland, there are some things that you can do to secure your firearm and remain legal while you're doing it. I'm going to give you these tips as sort of a broad overview of things to keep in mind when traveling through states with poor gun laws. This is absolutely not an end all be all, but in the situation where you are stopped by a law enforcement officer, then these things would be a priority. So before I went through Maryland, I made sure first that my gun was out of its holster. I removed the ammo from the gun, took the round out of the chamber, so now this gun is completely clear. Now I do have an ammo can where I can keep my ammunition like this. If you're talking about what you're actually carrying, these hollow points, this would be a felony in New Jersey. That's why I'm saying that a lot of these things are very situational and you have to be careful about what you're doing. So what I did when driving through Maryland was I took the gun and removed the ammo from it like this so it is in a safe condition. You could lock the slide to the rear if you want. You could even put a lock through the gun. And then I had a place to keep my ammo and lock that up and I also have a place to keep the gun and lock this up with a key padlocks, combination locks, or something of the sort. Now another thing that you want to do is keep the ammo and the firearm separate from each other even if they are locked up. So as an example, I could lock this up in a box and then put it up in my glove box and then I could take the ammo and lock it up in the back. It's good to keep as much separation from the actual firearm and the ammo as possible. And in my case, it wasn't a super extreme case, so I was okay with doing those things. So as long as all of my firearms are in that condition with no ammo or magazines in the actual firearms and they're both locked up, the ammo and the guns, and they're separate, you should be okay for the most part. I also made it a point to not stop in Maryland. I don't even want to pull over at a gas station. I just wanted to get through to my destination because I was actually going to a training event at the time. So that will sort of lead us into this hypothetical situation of what happens if you do get pulled over and you have firearms with you. Now this part for me is getting into an even grayer area. This is something that I'm really not comfortable with speaking on, but people want to know my thoughts, so I'm gonna give them to you. Now, say everything is locked up and secure and I'm driving down the highway and I happen to be in Maryland. I look in my rear view mirror and there is a police officer behind me pulling me over. There's no reason to stress or freak out about this so I simply pull to the side of the road and the officer approaches the vehicle. He says, hey, how you doing? You know why I pulled you over? Uh, sorry officer, I think I might have been speeding a little bit. Or maybe he'll say, hey, you got a brake light out or you didn't have your turn signal on, something of the sorts. For the most part, if I'm getting pulled over, it's going to be for a simple traffic violation. I've talked with police officers on multiple occasions, so I say, okay, I'm sorry, sir. I apologize for whatever I have done. I'll give him my license and registration. I'll go back to the car, write me a ticket or not come back and that should be the end of the transaction. Now in some states they do have laws where they say that you have to declare if you have any firearms with you in the vehicle. Now if that traffic stop escalates for some reason, first of all, I'm probably being an idiot. If you get pulled over by a police officer and he just starts hounding you with questions and then he eventually wants to search your vehicle, chances are you're being a little sketchy or shady, you're kind of doing some weird things with your hands. There is some very simple etiquette that goes into talking with law enforcement officers and police officers when you get into altercations like that. But for the most part, if you're like a respectable human being and you know how to communicate with people, it really shouldn't get to that point. So if I'm traveling through a state where I'm not supposed to have firearms, but a law enforcement officer wants to search my vehicle, 
One thing is I can simply say no, I don't consent to searches or seizures. And in that case, they will have to go and get a warrant and it's just a whole big process. But again, you really shouldn't be getting yourself into a situation like that. For the most part, a very, very large majority of gun owners are good, decent human beings. So for the most part, just be cool and collected. Don't be dumb. Know the laws where you're going. Make sure everything is secure and you're doing things in a responsible manner. Now, if the officer presents you with a question for some reason and they say, hey, are you traveling with any firearms in your vehicle? Again, that's another really gray area. Do they have the right in that state to ask you a question like that? And two, do you have to answer a question? question like that. That is all very dependent on where you're at, where you're going, and what you're actually doing. So we'll sort of end that hypothetical situation there and that will hopefully give you guys something to kind of take home and think about for yourself if you are ever traveling out of state with firearms. The last point or takeaway there is to simply be smart, do your research, talk with people who maybe have traveled through the certain areas that you're going to. If you are really worried about it, talk with law enforcement officers, talk with a lawyer, and just simply make sure that whatever you are doing is a justified and good reason for you doing it. So that is pretty much all that I have for this topic of discussion. Like I said, this is something that I didn't really want to hit on, but I got so many questions on it that I figured I might as well speak my mind a little bit. I'll end by saying again that I'm not a legal professional. Just take this for what it is. This is just my own personal research and experiences. I have traveled into many states with bad gun laws like New Jersey and New York, and there are a lot of things to keep in mind, but if you really want to be sure, I would recommend talking to a professional about the situation. So hopefully you guys could take something away from this video. Hopefully I answered some of your questions. If you have any more, you can ask them in the comments down below. But at the end of the day, I hope this just sort of got your mind thinking about this situation if you are ever confronted with it in the future. Now from here, I am going to be heading back to Pennsylvania and I will finally be back home and back on my range for next week. I've got a ton of gun content to film. There is absolutely no shortage of Sunday Gun Day videos. I may not be back on the range next Sunday when you are watching the channel, but I will be shortly after that, so definitely stay tuned. If you are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week, and there is a ton of content coming down the line, so hopefully you guys are stoked to see all that. That's all that I got for today, so thank you all for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.